What's the word, y'all? Man, it is late, but I don't even care. And hopefully you don't either. Shout out to my night owls out there watching this episode. Bro, I didn't plan on uploading an episode today. I'm going to keep it a buck. And then Zach Levine decided to hit the dagger, and my heart was racing 112 beats per minute, and the Bulls got to win. The Bulls got to win. Listen, 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 listen. I know that ain't nothing for the other 29 teams, but for me as a Bulls fan who's been down bad for the past couple seasons, this is one of our best wins in years. You hear me? Years. And I'm here to talk about it. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. This is Call Game. I just talk about basketball, baby. It is a great community. Do not miss out. Let's take a look at this Chicago Bulls. Hey, we're going to talk about the Portland Trailblazers in their last couple games and how they've been um, a disappointment so far through the first couple weeks of the season. But let me focus on my Chicago Bulls because Billy Donovan is a coach. The Chicago, the, the Chicago Bulls have a, a coach. Because, listen... This is not a game that the Bulls win the last couple years. When you're down by 20 in the first quarter, this Bulls team is notorious for turning over and just like, here, you can have it. And that's how we end games where we're, we lose by 40 or we're down by 40 at one point. And listen, this team is, has been playing dramatically different the last couple games than the first couple games of the season. It has been this. And oh my God, I cannot. Listen, when you are a fan of a team, and you, I'm pretty sure you can relate to this too. You are that team's biggest critic. Nobody is a bigger Bulls critic on this platform than I am because there is not a possession that I miss as a diehard fan. So I see everything, and I am hypercritical of them. And maybe I've been too hard on them. This is one of those games that's making me change my mind about some of the things. Now, I'm not saying that Bulls basketball is about to be in the playoffs. I'm not saying anything like that. But we saw the thing that I've been saying a lot, and not just about basketball but in life, is things that we should be looking for is growth. It's growth. Earlier in the season, we got down by 20 in the first quarter, and by halftime, it was 40. Today, we got down by 20 in the first quarter, and we won the damn game. That is growth. I got to give a lot of love to Zach Levine because the last couple games, I, he didn't shoot it officially. I don't give a damn about that. The last couple games, he has been so impactful. From last game with no Luka, he come out and dropped 20 plus points in the first quarter to tonight when his shot wasn't going down. He became the facilitator that the Bulls needed in that time. And then obviously he hit the dagger to close it out. Uh, I got to give a lot of love to Thaddeus Young. Now, I know a lot of Bulls fans were calling for Thaddeus Young to get pulled out of the game because he took a bad shot. He, uh, he, he, Somebody drew a charge on him late in the game. But Billy Donovan is, is a good coach, and he knew that the way Thad Young plays defense on the pick and rolls dramatically different the way Wendell Carter plays it, and we need it the way Thad Young's playing. When Wendell Carter's playing the pick and roll, he is dropping so – he might as well be under the rim. And when you're playing against Dame and CJ, being under the rim on the pick and roll is stupid. Yusuf Nurkic, Enos Cantor, these are big body hard screen setters, so the guard is not getting around that. The center or whoever is supposed to be on that coverage has to step up because Dame and CJ were dogging us in that first quarter because of the way Wendell Carter is playing the defense, right? So late in this game, Wendell Carter is still doing that. Billy Dom's like, Thad, get in here. Ice that. I think that's I think that's what the plan was. And guess what? The shots that they were getting off wasn't this quality. Now a lot of this a lot of this is due to the fact that the Portland Trailblazers went ice cold. Um, but I, I do want to give a lot of love to my Bulls, man. They just they they showed their heart today, and at, at the end of the day, we want growth. We want our teams to show their heart. This is a big, big win. It just is. Will it mean something when the season is over? Probably not. But I'm going to look back on this day and be super excited about the time my Bulls beat the Portland Trail Blazers when they were down by 20. The first team this season to be down by 20 and have a comeback, if you didn't know. Um, on the other side of the ball, the Portland Trail Blazers have been disappointing, right? There's a team that with their with acquisition, accus, with the new people that they acquired and, and people coming back from injuries, I expected this team to be a lot better. And, and I think that they will get it together, do not get me wrong. But some of the people that they were relying on or, or looked forward to relying on haven't been that. Robert Covington started off this game hitting his like first three threes, and then he went back ice cold. He's playing like he's like his 2K character. And Yusuf Nurkic hasn't this season had the impact that we saw him have before the leg snap or even the bubble. You know, he just hasn't been that good this season. He's a bruiser. He's a hard body. He sets good screens. That is something he'll always bring. But on the like defensively, he ain't been that. You know what I'm saying? And, and offensively, he ain't really been that either. So it's, it's been kind of rough. You know, two of their starters not performing to where you want them to be. And again, I do think that will change when the season goes out. So I don't want to spend too much time over analyzing the Portland Trailblazers because I do think they will be better. These last two games got to hurt, though. To get 60 dropped on you and then lose to the Chicago Bulls, who again 
looked at I, – I, I feel like every team looks at the Chicago Bulls and see free cheese. So to lose that game, it's got to be rough. Shout out to my Bulls, man. God, God, I am so happy right now. Wow, it is super late. It is 1 o'clock in the morning. I shouldn't be this hyper, but I am because the Bulls won a game. Let's talk about the other games really briefly. This was not a day that I planned on actually making an episode of Called Game, but the Bulls won, so I knew people wanted to see it. Shout out to you for watching. Start off at the top. Talk about the Brooklyn Nets, man. The last time I talked about the Brooklyn Nets, we were talking about some of the problems that they had in their starting lineup, how they lack perimeter defense, how they lack playmaking, and I made the suggestion that they should start Bruce Brown. And today they started Bruce Brown, and guess what? They looked really good even without KD. KD get well soon, um, but they looked really good without KD. And I'm not saying that's all because of the one Bruce Brown thing, because Bruce Brown was not even the best change they had to the lineup, but Bruce Brown did help out a lot. I mean, he brought facilitation when they needed it. His defense was great, and that allowed TLC to come off the bench, and it wasn't just a Karis LeVert show. TLC was cutting back door and getting those passes. It was it was beautiful. Um, but the biggest change in the lineup was allowing Jared Allen to get the start who would have thought that starting the better player would be best for the team <laughs> Steve Nash man hey wizard Steve Nash is a wizard out there these are two very very good um changes to the starting lineup and it still allows everybody else to do their thing man um I, so I love to see that I was actually surprised that Joe Harris didn't get the start and Torian Prince did I don't know what to feel about that just yet but it did help to have Bruce Brown and Jared Allen now talk about bad timing a couple days ago, Rudy Gobert got flamed by Shaq. If you want $40 million, all you have to do is average 11 or something like that, which is, I don't, I wanted to make an entire video, not just about what Shaq is saying, but how like some of these older players just, their attacks on the younger generation is kind of weird to me, right? Because Shaq, Rudy Gobert is not in any realm of Shaq. Nobody's comparing Rudy Gobert to Shaq. So why is Shaq so, so triggered about Rudy Gobert yes everybody knows even even Utah Jazz fans have to admit that when Rudy Gobert got his contract it was a, it was a slight overpay whatever you had to do it to keep him on the team you had to keep him in the city it doesn't matter it was a slight overpay but like no, no who, who, nobody was comparing Shaq to Rudy Gobert I just don't understand where the animosity comes from and bad time it comes from Shaq talking all his trash two days ago and then the first game back he gets dominated by the fro Jared Allen basically had a 2020 game where he where he dunked on him and Rudy Gobert couldn't hit a shot timing is absolutely terrible and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Utah Jazz because um, Mike Donovan hasn't been able to put it together so far this season I'm guessing that that's going to change but there's so many times um, with this team not even just this season but the year before last year even the year before that where if it's sometimes it's, if it's Donovan Mitchell if it's not Donovan Mitchell nobody else can do anything it's like here Donovan please score for us and nobody else can and that was what today was uh, not to mention the other all-star player got destroyed by a dude with the biggest alpha I've ever seen. So bad timing on their part. Shout out to the Brooklyn Nets. That's a that's a big win for them. Um, with all the injuries that they were, I mean, with no Kevin Durant, I definitely expected them to come into this game and lose. But Kyrie Irving, I don't know how it went this far without mentioning Kyrie Irving because he was electric, especially in that first quarter. Um, so they got a big win. The Lakers beat the Grizzlies the second game in a row with LeBron James coast for three quarters, and he's like. All right, it's my turn. And he just takes the ball. He scores all the buckets. He does all the passes. He does plays all the defense, too. And they get another win. And we knew that LeBron James was going to coast this regular season from them leaving the bubble like two months ago or whatever it was. Um, but to see LeBron hit overdrive when it's needed, it's actually really fun. I'm getting to the point where maybe I don't want to watch Lakers games until the fourth quarter because that's what LeBron decides that he wants to really show up. Him saying that Dylan Brooks is a baby. Hey, Dylan Brooks is a talker. So it makes sense why LeBron would say that to him. Dylan Brooks just be yapping. And that's just part of his game. Um, MVP Nikola Jokic right here, right now. I understand that the team is under 500, but he is super fun. He might be the most fun player to watch in the league at this at this time, at this moment. Um, I don't know what his averages are, but I I know he was shooting like 60% from the field and 50% from three going into this game. And guess what? He was super efficient. He is must-see basketball. If you're not watching the Denver Nuggets, you're losing out on watching a one of the purest basketball players, like legitimately, from his passing to his shooting to he just plays the game of basketball so, so well. And both of the top centers in the league, um, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic, both look like MVP candidates to start off the season. Again, the Denver Nuggets have to put together a couple more wins before we start having them on the ballot. But I'm a, I'm guessing that they will put that together. Um, when it came to the the Timberwolves, we I understand now why they released Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. I didn't expect Jared Vanderbilt to be as good as he was today. And I would, based on what I saw today, I would love to see him starting alongside Car Anthony Towns. Watto had a very big game too, but I think that Jared Vanderbilt can cover up some of the 
defensive woes that Carl Anthony Towns will have. And um, watching Hern Gomez can't really do that. You know what I'm saying? There are a lot of plays in this game where it was a big block by Jared Vanderbilt. Just energy-type plays, and that's what they need when Carl Anthony Towns comes back. This is one of the few games this season where I felt it felt like D'Angelo Russell was being D'Angelo Russell, and hopefully this is a step in the right direction. I, I, I just rooted for Jared Culver, bro. He just, when I'm watching, I'm just wanting so much more than what we are getting. That's all I'm saying. I don't know how Timberwolves feel, fans feel about Jared Culver, but I want him to be successful. And, yeah, you know, the Spurs got a win against the Clippers in a game that I turned off because it was a 20-point game early. Then I looked back, and it was like a three-point game. I don't know what happened at thir- in that third quarter for the Clippers to really add that comeback, but they did. And the end of this game was so weird with all the fouls and Patrick Beverly standing in the middle of the, the free-throw line when somebody's supposed to attempt a free-throw. Shout out to the Spurs for closing it out because they, they damn near choked it. They almost choked it. Keldon Johnson is super fearless. He You will not outplay Keldon Johnson because that man has a motor of a 1,000. And that's that's great. They need that type of guy. I love that Greg Popovich decided to go with the high hand and, and Patty Mills to late late in this game, and not just say, "All right, Lamarcus, it's your turn." Because Lamarcus, so far this season, I know he's been fight, fighting that shoulder stuff, ain't been really good. So they went small ball with having um Rudy Gay at the five a lot of this game, and Jacopo had a good game as well. Um, Patty Mills though turned into FIBA Patty eight threes. I didn't even notice that it was eight. Eight threes. This is a game that they they probably should have lost. I know it was no PG, but DeMar DeRose didn't play particularly well, so they should have lost this one, but everybody else showed up and the Clippers catch an L. The Bulls won. That's all you really care about, right? Be sure to leave a like on the video, man. And I, I'll see y'all possibly tomorrow. Um I'm sorry, I, I didn't watch a lot of these games in depth, honestly. I'm still on cloud now. Go Bulls.